uh, nice enough to join us as he's been uh, doing on Fridays, all time Kings icon, the one and only former coach, GM analyst, Jerry Reynolds. Jerry, uh, what do you think of the fact that the Lakers are getting a couple of long stretches where they don't have to leave Los Angeles in this new schedule? I mean, you know, just uh, seeing that, uh, I was so surprised. <laughs> I mean, you could have knocked me over with a feather. It's like, what? The, the league gave the Lakers a break? I, I, my God, I, I just about uh, get, got a little nervous and dizzy. I had to sit down. <laughs> I'm just glad that somebody's finally recognizing that the Lakers, you know, deserve a break. You know, after all their years of, of hardship, and year after year, <laughs> never getting the benefit of the doubt. I mean. It's just good that, yeah. that the league is finally recognizing them. Exactly. And uh, I mean, it's not, the, and of course the, you know, people fail to realize they also get two extra home games anyway, because they right. play the Clippers twice in the same building. And, and certainly it's always Laker fans dominating. Huh? That's a great yeah. Point. That's yeah. Point. Is there anything else, Jerry, that, um, that's, that's stuck out to you about uh, the schedule? We know the Kings are opening with, uh, what is it? 10 of their first 15 are uh, on the road. That's, that's, that's a tough way to start a season. Yeah, it is tough. Of course, from, you know, going on last year, the Kings were honestly better on the road than at home. Uh, So, you know, I, I haven't said that. I, I I really like the idea of the way the, excuse me, had a a (laughs) call fair. Yeah, I need blessed. Uh, but, uh, just the way it ends with 11, I think of 14 at home, because if they can get off to just a decent start, you know, hang on, uh, then they're in great shape going forward. And especially at the end where you're looking for positioning. Jerry, I'm, what, what do you think when you look at a schedule, what are just some of the natural disadvantages that, that come along with the schedule? Like obviously, you know, back to backs aren't great, but like long road trips or, you know, I mentioned how sometimes, especially now you can do a back to back where you'll play in, in Sacramento the first night and then have to make a flight over to Utah for the second leg of that back to back. Just kind of like the, in that sense, what, what are some of the, the natural disadvantages uh, that you look for in an NBA schedule? Well, you know, the, the I wouldn't say the back-to-backs too much uh, because, you you know, you, it kind of equals out as far as you catch teams on back-to-back sometimes and, and uh, you get caught on them. I mean, that's uh, – but, but with them doing more and more games where they're playing the same team twice – that equals out, but the the type of back to backs that always killed killed me was like playing in Sacramento, then flying to Denver for the you know on a back to back because you got in there so late and and it just was really a disadvantage. Uh, so, but you know I I just never really worried too much about that. I mean it's the old deal used to be say forty one or forty one. I guess with a tournament maybe you can't say that. But, uh, you know, with the bad stretches, you know, you'll have, uh, you know, seven or eight, seven game road trips and you'll have six, seven games at homestand. So uh, the thing I've noticed, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but at the end of the season, the better teams seem to win the most games. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I've noticed that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that yeah. funny? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you about the tournament because I think we know how you feel about the tournament and you mentioned that you know the schedule is a little different because of that but let me ask you this instead um last year the kings as we know they kind of snuck up on some teams especially earlier in the year they're probably not going to do that again does that matter is that is that a factor at all this year i think it is i really do i i think it's one of those things that even though the Kings started poorly last year but but they were a surprise team and so it's always one of those things that uh, much like uh, a year, not last season, but the season before, the Minnesota Timberwolves were a big surprise team, and then, then the next last year they weren't. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think the team has to be, you know, cognizant of that. I mean, I, I I don't know how much impact, but I think it does have some impact. Jerry, I really want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, just to kind of switch gears for a second. Would you have more new nicknames for? No, him no, no new nicknames or anything like that. I've I've learned my role. I know my place. Uh, I actually want to ask you about the WNBA. I know you were obviously a really big part of of the Monarchs when they were here in town. 
Uh, and a lot has been made recently of, of, you know, the two super teams in the W and if that's good for the sport and, and what would really lead to the, the growth of the women's basketball game. What, what do you think uh, about the, this super team era of, of the Liberty and the aces or, or what do you really think is, is what the league needs to take uh, another step forward in, in gaining popularity with the masses? Well, I do think that I, I don't have a problem with the, the kind of super teams. I think in general, you know, it's a little bit like the Yankees of old or the UCLA Bruins in basketball. I think uh, dominant teams create more interest, actually, mm -hmm. uh, whether, agree. you know, to, to like them or hate them. So I think that part's good. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, it, to me, it's just a situation where the game in the WNBA is clearly better the players the WNBA, the women's game has improved at a more rapid rate, I think, than the men's game. But mm -hmm. it it's still, you know, by playing it in the summer, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they could, uh, you know, it would. It, uh, I'm just not confident it would do better, you know, in the winter. Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things to where I thought. 15, 18 years ago, it would be much bigger than it is. Right. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, uh, if you had the answer, obviously somebody, somebody probably would have been doing something about it. So I, I think everybody's yeah, because, still wondering. Know, the, yeah. They, the ratings or you know, attendance was much higher in 2002 or three than it is now. Mm -hmm. So, so, I mean, I, so, so whatever they're doing marketing wise, they probably need to try to do something different. Mm -hmm. That'd be yeah. my guess. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's a thought. By the way, I, I I gotta gotta ask you guys. I mean, it seemed to me like you didn't have much understanding of how to put on your damn socks to play basketball. <laughs> well, I just it wasn't that. Have you heard that? John Wooden would tell. That's the first thing he would tell players. Supposedly, like the first thing Coach Wooden he tells you how to put your socks on. I just I had always heard that story, Jerry. Maybe maybe it's not even true, but that's what I'd heard. Well, I, I can assure you as a college coach and being Wooden was a hero of mine, I guarantee you that's what we did in college. <laughs> and let me explain something to you non-believers. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of points here because not only putting your socks on properly, but also tying your shoes properly, it really cuts, it really does cut down on the chance for blisters and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, for those of you that like playing basketball, you know, you don't play as well with That's right. blisters on That's your right. feet. That's and right. And then, and then a, another thought that, uh, that even Coach Wooden didn't mention in many of his books is, is putting your socks on properly, especially when you've been taped. Ah. You know, it's uh. even more important because if, you know, if you, you have a little crinkles in there and, and you, you are sure going to get some blisters. Right. <laughs> And your feet. Yeah. So there. Yeah. Wow. You see, you know, okay. it, I tried to guys, tell the youngster, but he didn't. He didn't believe me. Well, you, 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 California guys, just, don't, <laughs> you just, you just miss out. That's all I can say. All right. Oh, all right. We appreciate it. You have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon, Jerry. Thank you. Well, uh, I've tried to help you as much as I can. So you, you guys, carry on. We're on our own Thank now. You, Thank you. Yeah. My See, it's an Indiana thing. Too. I know. Yeah, I guess I got to look Basics. up the proper way of putting on socks. I guess uh, didn't know that was going to be on my For basketball itinerary. But uh, you're going to go play golf or whatever. And go to a block party. Doesn't yeah, matter. Sure. But you're going to play basketball. Okay. I, Get I, your I socks on properly, son. I as the kids, I was slept. None of this wearing them I backwards. Was super, super slept on this. I did not know that there was a a proper way of putting on socks, but. Mm -hmm. All right. The more you know, kids, I guess. Uh, Bob Fitzgerald's going to join us this hour. Of course, he's the voice of the Warriors, also the preseason voice of the 49ers. We'll talk to him about tomorrow night's game against the Broncos. And up next, Back to Fantasy Showdown reveals the NBA team. They got too many TV games. It's coming up here, Whitey and Watkins, Sackdown Sports.